Okay, so today I'd like to share with you a great plugin that we um, use quite often. It's called WP125. It's a WordPress plugin, and what it's really good for is for um, loading sponsor logos onto your website. You can use it for lots of other things. You can use it for small advertisements, uh, sponsor logos. You could use it for small spots on your website for things that you wanted to advertise. Uh, it has lots of great uses, lots of things you can do with it. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to see how you can set it up so that you can have logos like these ones that you see on the bottom of the Art of Transition website. Uh, this one has actually had a little bit of help from a graphic designer and a programmer so they've actually customized all the logos to make sure that they look really nice at this really small size and they've also resized the WP125 plugin to give us slightly different sized images. By default what it does is it gives you 125 by 125 pixel square where you can load in your very various logos or plugs or whatever they may be. Um, a developer can certainly customize the size of those for you, but by default that's how it starts out. So, like I said, you can see how it works here. Just to give you another example of how someone else has used it, on the Day of Hope and Leadership site, we can see they have them down the right hand side here. There's also a link saying please call us for sponsorship information and they've put the phone number in there. Um, and then, so if we click on that, we'll go right to their sponsors page and it says here's all our sponsor levels. And if you go down to the bottom, they've actually repeated it again down here. At one point we did have it going across the bottom of the site. We've moved it to give us some, some other exciting things at the bottom of the screen so it looks much the same as at the top. But this is on the bottom of every single page on their site which gives great um, exposure to your sponsors. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into a fresh new website that I'm just working on. Okay, so I've gotten all logged into my WordPress. I'm just going to quickly install this plugin because I don't have it installed on the website yet. So I'm going to go under plugins and uh, add new. I'm going to do a quick search for it. It's WP125. So I'm going to search for that plugin. And it should pop up right at the top of the list once the search results come back. Here it is. So I'm going to click on install now because I know that's the one that I want. Yes, I'm sure I want to go ahead. Um, you may have to enter your FTP information here. If you don't have it handy, your host should be able to provide it to you. So I'm just going to click proceed. It may preload like mine did if you've installed things in there before. And then I'm just going to say activate plugin and then we are all set to go. So this is actually just a uh, sample website that we use to test out plugins. I just thought it would be a great way to show you how this one works. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick my ads into this right column over here now that I've got it all activated. So I'm going to go under Appearance and then Widgets, just like I would with any other widget or plugin. And I'm going to scroll down here. Um, we've got lots of widgets installed here. So I'm going to highlight this WP125 and I'm just going to drag it over. I'm going to put it right at the top so we can see it right away. You'll see it gives you no options here. That's okay. There's somewhere else that we can go and set them. So I'm just going to save that, make sure it updates, take a look at the website and see if I can see it in that spot. It should appear right here as soon as the site reloads. There we go. We can see I've got ads. It says advertise here um, and now I want to actually put something in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my dashboard just to start fresh. Assuming that everything loaded okay, you should see the ads plugin down here on the left hand side. Now we're not going to go there quite yet. There's one step that we want to do first, um, but just so if you're seeing it there, then you've got everything going and everything's working great. Okay, so I've got my ad all ready and I'm going to go under the media library. I'm going to say add new, just like I would if I was doing a PDF or any other image. And then when that page comes up, I'm just going to find the file on my computer. If you had it handy, you could just drag and drop it into that slot. I'm actually going to sort it by date here just because I know that it was one that I just saved. So I know it should be the most recent. And there we go. So I'm just going to double click on that. It'll upload the file for me. Um, ideally, you want to go through and customize all these details and make them right. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to leave that as is. And then what I want to do is I want to copy this address here. So I'm going to select all and then I'm going to copy and it'll just stay in my um, clipboard until I'm ready for it. So then I'm going to go on the left hand side here under ads and I'm going to say add edit because I want to add a new one. And that will bring me to the screen that will let me add 
new ads in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name it, and I'm going to give it a name that means something to me. I'm not going to say ad1 because this is actually the name that you're going to use when you're tracking the ads. Now if you're doing um, ads for an event or something where you might have the same sponsors year after year, I'm actually going to put a year after it to make sure that I can track the ads for this year, and then next year I'll go in and I'll add 2013 sponsors. Um, for the slot number, you can see I've got one through six. This can be increased. I'll show you that in the settings in a minute. Um, and basically, I'm just going to put this one in slot number one. For the target URL, you can make this anything you want. It can be their website address. It can be your website address. It can be um, an affiliate program, anything you want. You just paste any link in there. That's where people are going to go when they click on the ad. Um, here we can choose how long we want the ad to appear. So I can have it show for 30 days. I can say other and actually choose a specific date that I want it to expire. Or for most ads we say I'll remove it manually and that way I can take it down when I'm ready. Um, doesn't take advantage of the great um, ad expiry tools that are in here, but it's good to put in. Um, you can turn off counting the number of times the ad is clicked, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. That's kind of the best thing about this plugin. And then in this field, I'm just going to delete what's here, and I'm going to paste in that address that I copied um, when we were in the media library. And that's the whole thing. That's all I'm going to do to load an ad. So I'm going to say save. Now, if I was loading in a whole bunch of ads, what it's going to do is it's going to basically bring me back to the same screen so I can add another ad on top if I wanted to. If I was loading a whole bunch, this is really handy. Right now, I'm just loading one, so I don't need this page. Um, then, basically, if I go to the website and we refresh and have a look, uh, you can see I've got my ad here. If I click on it, it should take me to the Web That Works website, and you do always want to check the ads. It's more most important for these sponsor ads, especially if people are paying for those slots. You do want to make sure the ads work, but anytime you're adding a link, it's good practice to click on it and just make sure it takes you to where you thought it was going to. Um, now, as I said before, we can actually customize this advertise here, so I'll show you how to do that now. Yeah, we can see the ad here, which is great. Then I'm going to go back to Manage, and we should see that we have one click counted on that ad. Look at that. So we can see that I've got one click. You can see the start date, the expiry date. Um, if you did want to make any changes to it, you can just hit the edit button here. Or if you wanted to turn off that ad for a little while, you can deactivate it. If you want to delete it, you need to go in and edit it and then choose delete and you can delete it forever. But if there's any chance of them coming back, if you just deactivate it, that makes it a lot easier um, to put it back next time rather than having to go through the whole process over again. If you do have any inactive ads, they're going to appear under here. Um, I don't have any, so it won't show me anything, but if you click on inactive ads, it'll show you those there. And then the last thing I'll show you is the settings for this plugin. They're pretty straightforward, but we'll have a quick look. So if I go under settings on the left side here, you can see there's a few different options here. Um, I haven't had a ton of luck with this columns um, tool. I would give it a try. Try one column, try two columns, see which one looks better depending on how your setup's working. Um, the number of ad slots here, right now it's set to six. I could change that to be three or whatever many I want. Um, any that don't have an ad loaded into them will actually appear with that um, default image. So I might just want two because right now I have one sponsor and I have one slot saying that I can ask for new sponsors. Um, if for some reason you have a bunch of sponsors, what you may want to do is load in, so say we have two ad slots. If I load five different people into slot number one and five different people into slot number two, it'll actually show them at random. So that way everyone's getting exposure but I don't have to have ten different slots for ads appearing on the side of my website. Um, I can change the ad order, so here I can make it normal or random. That'll actually switch which ads appear where, so if you always want slot number one at the top, you would choose normal. If you wanted it random, it'll actually rotate where the slots appear, so that can be a good option. The widget title adds that, is basically what appears up here, so I'm just going to leave that as is. Um, if it is an ad, you kind of want people to know that. If it's sponsors, you could change it to that. Um, here I would put in my sales page, so I don't actually have one right now, but uh, you know I could put in the address of that page, um, sponsors.com maybe. Um, th what that'll do is that link will get attached to that default image, and if people click on it, it'll take them there. So that could be a page saying, we're looking for sponsors for an, our event, here's our different packages, here's the benefits of each, and you might even want to put a PayPal link on there so they can pay for it right there. 
Um, default ad style sheet, not something you probably ever want to look at. Um, your designer may want to get in there, but to start off with, that's a great start. Leave it like that. Um, the expiration email, that's the email address where it's going to send reminders to if you set your ads to expire. So again, that's a great option if you're looking at doing um, ads for a certain period of time, maybe you're selling them for one month or two months, um, this can be the address of the administrator who's going to go through and make sure they get the, uh, they, they stay up or come down. Um, you get an email a certain number of days before the ad expires, so if you're going to have to write to the client, wait to hear back from them, you may want to make this a little bit longer to give yourself some more flexibility, uh, especially if your ads are expiring on Fridays, because that doesn't give you much time. And then the default ad, um, if I wanted to change this, I would do it much the same way. I'd go to the media up here, and then I'd go add new, and I'd l l load in a new default ad, and I'd just paste that address in here. Um, and that'll show that gray box. It'll change it to whatever you upload. Um, so then I'm just going to save my changes. And we'll go back over here and do our quick refresh. And we should now see that we have only two ad slots instead of six. Look at that. So um, my advertise here, if I click on it, it's going to take me to sponsors.com. And uh, yeah, everything looks good. So that is the WP125 plugin. As I said, we like it a lot. It's great for tracking the clicks. You can see the success. You can use it for all different things, um, events, sponsors, members, um, your own ads, um, outside ads. You could sell them, all kinds of things. And uh, yeah, it's a really great tool, and we'd suggest getting it loaded into your WordPress.